Going to be discussing the Reacher uh, TV series, which is on Amazon Prime. So I'm going from one streaming service to the other. Um, so here with the Reacher series, um, you have Reacher, uh, the titular character who's played by Alan Richardson, uh, who people might know from uh, Blue Mountain State, and I know him from the Titan Show, uh, where he played Hawk, uh, where he was Hawk and Dove, and um, or you might also know him as a uh, Raphael from the from the 2014 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, yeah, he did the voice for that character as well. Yeah, I was looking at that cast list for that, and I forgot that Johnny Knoxville voiced Leonardo in those movies. I completely forgot that. Huh? Yeah, Johnny Knoxville. He voiced yeah Leonardo in the in the first one. He got replaced in the second one, but he voiced him in the first one. I was like, oh wow, completely forgot huh. that. Um, so in this series, it's based on the books by Lee Childs. Uh, they did two movies out of it, which was starring Tom Cruise. Um, Tom Cruise mm-hmm. is a big fan of the books uh, and, and helped get them, got them made into movies. Um, so mm-hmm. with this kind of series here, um, Alan Richardson definitely physically fits the character more than Tom Cruise, mm-hmm. uh, even though I think Tom Cruise... Yeah, yeah that, that was a critique of the, of the Jack Reacher movies, that you had a lot of the personality of Jack Reacher, but Tom Cruise just doesn't physically capture that character because he's like in the book, he's described as a guy who's like six foot five, 200 and some odd pounds and is like a gorilla. Mm. Yeah. I mean, he can barely even fit through doorways. I mean, this guy is the way he's described mm-hmm. it in kind of the books and, you know, Tom Cruise, short King respect, but you know, he did a lot to help the <laughs> advancement of, of, of short people, but, uh, and, and media, but yeah, which, yeah, every, which I love the first Jack Reacher movie. Mm. The second one, eh. Yeah, I never saw the second one because I've always heard mixed things about the it's, second one. Uh, it, it ain't good. Yeah, but the first one I did like. I did like quite a bit. Um, mm-hmm. But in this series here, you do have Alan Richardson who you know does more physically match match uh, match the role, but can he also bring that personality of Reacher into the <laughs> series that we kind of saw with Tom Cruise? Um, I, I, was, I was like of two minds. When I first uh, turned on the... Turn on the first episode. You see Alan Richson uh, walking around as Reacher, and he's not really given any dialogue. And yeah, he gets arrested, accused of a crime he didn't commit, and then he's like sitting in an interrogation room. And the second he opens his mouth, okay, yeah, this dude is is Jack Reacher. Yeah, have you ever read the books? I think I've read the book that this show that this series is based on, a uh, Killing Floor. Mm-hmm. And I think I read, I think I read a little bit of one shot, which was the basis of the Tom Cruise movie. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you see him, you know, I mean, it just, yeah. I and mean, we have a guy as big as he is. Um, I mean, it, there's a lot of times he just stares people down. I mean, in the, even in the first episode, he's walking to this diner. Like he just, like he's, he describes himself. He's a hobo. Like he just goes from one place <laughs> to the next place. He has no ties to anything. He's got no mortgage. He's got nothing. He got no address. He just goes from one place to the next place. And then in the, even in the first episode, he's just walking to the diner, and then he sees this dude verbally abusing his wife. Um, and then all he do, he doesn't say anything. He just looks at the dude, and the dude just goes like, "What well, you mean? You got a problem?" And he just keeps looking at him, and he goes like, "Well, hey man, listen man, I'm just sorry man. All right, I just had a bad <laughs> day. I'm you know I'm just I'm stressed man. You know I'm I'm sorry. You know." Um, and then he just kind of just walks into the diner. You know. And when he gets kind of arrested for a crime he didn't commit, the whole kind of premise of this show, so he ends up in Marbury, uh, Georgia, and, uh, you know, he kind of gets arrested for a crime, you know, further investigation, obviously he didn't do it, and then he helps the police figure out who did do it over the course of the eight-episode uh, series. And uh, working with him is, you have Michael uh, Goodwin, who uh, is the actor who plays Oscar Finley. Um, he was also, I remember him seeing him in I Zombie, and he's basically... Playing. If you ever watched the iZombie, very good show, by the way. I, I saw it. It was on the CW. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's fantastic. Um, he's basically kind of playing the same character, kind of a no nonsense cop, you know, in a way. Um, then also mm-hmm. he's working with uh, Willa Fitzgerald, uh, who's the actress, and then the character she's playing is uh, uh, Roscoe uh, Copeland. Um, so he's kind of working with her, who's a uh, kind of a junior detective, deputy uh, kind of figure there in the town. Um, in this kind of small town, small area. Um, and then when he kind of comes into town, that's when shit just kind of 
goes kind of haywire because <laughs> all these dead bodies start to pop up uh just one after the next at uh, one certain point uh, there's even a whole town hall meeting go like hey we, we we've never had murders like this before in this town all of a sudden this guy shows this up big motherfucker <laughs> uh which they describe his height a lot in the show they call him a gorilla they call him an ape uh beast you know <laughs> what i mean like they, they just call him all names it's like you know just absolutely gigantic of a figure um, and the, the actor Alan Richardson, he did put on you know extra thirty pounds yeah, of muscle for he, this. Yeah, he put on like thirty pounds in order to play Reacher, and he was already a big dude. And just looking at him on the show, he looks like he ate Thad from Blue Mountain State. Yeah, uh, it's kind of like when you put the two side by side pictures of The Rock. Like you had The <laughs> Rock from kind of the WWE, and then you had The Rock, you know, kind of. And now it's like, yeah, it's like it's almost like, yeah, yeah. If you put you put like the rundown Rock next to Pain and Gain Rock, and it's like one ate the other. Yeah. Um. Uh. So you know, it, it's it's kind of the series kind of goes on. You know, you discover more about this town, more about what's kind of going on, and kind of this kind of underground under you know this kind of criminal activity that's going on underground within this kind of city in this small town uh well i shouldn't say city i should say more town this small town here um which is very good to watch and this being on amazon um it can get brutal with the action stuff uh i mean even yeah the- it, it's yeah even in the first episode it's kind of shocking when when fists start flying how quick and how violent it is oh yeah uh, very much so, and he does the action scenes very well. Um, you know, it's very early on. You see it where he's in prison. Uh, you see it in the trailer where he just, you know, gets, mm-hmm. you know, kind of ganged up about uh, on a bunch of guys and just absolutely beats the crap out of them. Um, and he takes his licks too. I mean, it's not a situation where you know, mm-hmm. I mean, he's like a superhero. He's completely invulnerable. Uh, but you know, he does takes his licks and takes his hits and does get beat up pretty good in the show throughout uh, throughout this kind of series, um, which is kind of nice to see. Um, but um, I think it's a nice supporting cast, you know what I mean, as well, mm-hmm. uh, with the two people he's working with, Malcolm Goodwin, Willow Fitzgerald. I think they do a very good job. Um, you know, very much you kind of see where that relationship is going, where he has with Willow Fitzgerald. But it's a nice, I think, romance that develops uh, over it, time it, in the show. It's a nice, de- it's a well-developed, slow burn romance. Mm. And I didn't, and even watching the first couple episodes, I wasn't expecting it to go there. Mm. Yeah, um, I like the way they do it in the story. Um, and then the the way this Reacher character is, um, he's very much like how Sherlock Holmes or Hercule Poirot is. Like he's he's so proficient at analyzing the smallest details and applying it. He can he can he can already you know get the answer already. Um, that kind of borderline you know I mean stuff like that. I mean it, it, you know it kind of borderlines on supernatural a lot of times because people are able to do these a lot of things and piece it all together super fast. So if you're a person who's ever kind of bothered by those things per se, I mean he does that a lot here, uh, just with the character. Um, so, but you know it is kind of fun to watch him in those situations, and it does. I think you know you do have an actor in Alan Richardson who does sell that very well. Like you mentioned, like when mm-hmm. he's getting interviewed, when you first see him with Oscar Finley um, and they're going back and forth, that is a great scene. And in, in the way he's able to do that and just take charge of the, you know, the, the investigation or the interrogation and just flip it, flip it around and go like, no, I already, I already know what this is all about. I already get the answers to everything already, uh, which is kind of interesting. What do you kind of feel about characters like that, that are kind of have that, almost supernatural ability of deducing things well for me he's kind of with him it's all felt like okay anybody if they're like looking at a crime scene long enough they could eventually come to these conclusions as well or it's all about like connecting like random dots that people normally don't think of which was a huge thing in in both uh this and in uh the 2014 jack reacher movie Mm. yeah um so i think yeah it, it never it yeah it never felt supernatural to me it felt like like real world good detective mm, okay. very much like a uh, uh daniel craig's benoit blanc in uh in knives out mm, okay yeah uh very good point there um yeah and it, it proves that alan richardson does a great job at, at reacher you know what i mean um on par mm-hmm. if not better than what tom cruise i think did in the reacher character mm-hmm. uh because he's got the physicality yeah, for yeah. it with yeah with the uh, cruise yeah it was more of the personality swagger of jack reacher with richin it's like the perfect blend of both he has the physical build that 
you know, that you see that guy walking towards you. He, he is shit your pants scary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, he's just absolutely, absolutely big. Yeah. Because like I said, there's lots of moments where he just, all you got to do is just stare, stare a person down. Because there's one moment with the dude's dog. Like, there's a whole running thing through the show with a person's dog in the yard. He just sees his dog. He goes, like, this dog is... He's not getting enough water. He's not eating. Like, what's going on? He goes into this <laughs> into this dude's private property, into his yard. <laughs> he just, like, decks this guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, decks him. And then, even before then, uh, he was like, uh, hey, man, what are you doing? Like, you're in my yard, you know what I mean? Like, we got a problem here. And all he mm-hmm. all he does is just stand up and goes like, no, we do? Like, like do we? It's like, he's <laughs> like, oh, shit, uh, okay, uh, no problem, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm just asking questions, man, you know, I'm just, I'm just asking, being helpful, <laughs> um, yeah, you know, uh, did, did you want some tea? I got some tea in the, in the refrigerator, maybe, you want some, you know? <laughs> yeah, can I get you anything? What, can I get you anything before you leave, sir? Yeah, um, so, I mean, that, that's just something that Cruz could never do in, in, in the part, mm-hmm. um, there, um, even though the action scenes, I thought, were good in the movies, is just something he could just never do there, mm-hmm. um, and the mystery as it, you know, kind of unravels, um, throughout the show, I think is also very good, and keeps you kind of interested as well. Uh, yeah, the mis- the mystery, it's constantly engaging, and there are twists and turns with it that, well, there is one twist where, yeah, you can see it coming just by who they cast to play that character. Mm. But everything else, I, everything else, I was like on my on my toes trying to figure it out until I think like the penultimate episode where they lay it all out. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then uh, also, I, you know, this is kind of a random thing. I was just happy to see Kristen Couric again. I'm like, I mentioned this with Hunter. Yeah, I was she's like, like so delightful. Yeah, I was like, where has she been? I haven't seen her since Smallville. I was like, wow, I really... I really miss her. Yeah, yeah. She, she's Smallville and that Street Fighter movie that definitely doesn't exist. Yeah, we don't talk about the Street Fighter movie. We don't talk about Chun Li, but we uh, don't we don't talk about Legend of Chun Li. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, I was like, yeah, she's very delightful. Yeah, here I was like, oh, I, I miss Kristen Couric. Um, I was watching, I was listening to the the Michael Rosenbaum podcast, and he had Jason Eccles mm-hmm. on there, and Jason Eccles was on Smallville. And he just mentioned how Kristen Kirk, like, you know, he's just like, well, you know, like she just used to just kind of read mostly in between scenes, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. she was kind of very quiet. It seems like she's very quiet, reserved, you know, everything mm-hmm. like that. Um, I want to know, maybe she just, I don't know, maybe she just took a break or, you know, maybe she just yeah, got this That happens. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, good to see her back. Good to see her back. I want to see her in some more stuff here. Um, but yeah, she has kind of a nice role here in the, in the show. I thought it was very good. Mm-hmm. Um you also have uh, Bruce uh, McGill, who's a veteran actor, very veteran character actor as well. Um, when you picture a he, guy, he is basically he is basically playing Foghorn Leghorn. Basically, I mean, when you when you picture a guy from the South, this is who you picture: like big white guy <laughs> walks with a cane. He, he is um, he is Doug Dimmodome, owner of the Dimsdale Dimmodome. <laughs> I I mean pretty pretty much I mean like he's just the ultimate kind of picture of the person you you imagine of that guy, and all he just is kind of coming in there with that kind of deep southern accent is just telling you know Jack Rich you got to move on now can't be in this town. Well, anymore. I say well <laughs> well I say I say Mister Rich you needs to get out to my town. Yeah, because <laughs> he's the uh, the mayor in the town. Um, and, you know, yeah, I mean, he doesn't like all this chaos that's going on with, with Reacher being, you know, connected to every single situation. Um, and, you know, the, I think they fill out the town kind of pretty nice, you know what I mean? All these kind of different mm-hmm. people there, and then you get the vibe of kind of what's going on there. Um, I love the Black Barber, by the way, when he goes to visit him. Like, they, I mean, you know, they have kind of a good relationship, and, you know, he kind of uses the, at one point in the series, the Black Barbershop, like it's like the Luke Cage Barbershop. And that series, we kind of goes with like kind of like operations and everything like that, where they kind of work out plans and stuff like that, which I thought was pretty fun. Um, and that's what the series is. It's it's fun, you know. What I mean, it's a nice kind mm-hmm. of almost throwback type series in a way. Um, you would watch where it's just a stranger comes to town, figures out things, solves crimes. You know what I mean? Stuff you would watch in like the seventies or eighties or something like that. Um, you know, where he was, you know, kind of able to do that, solve these kind of different cases. Um, the, it's already been greenlit for a season two. Um, and, well deserved. I well deserved. I dug the fuck out of this season. Yeah, uh, it has a lot really going for it. That's really great. Um, and I, it's funny there was like a headline of I think it was them saying like he wants to do uh what he wants to do for season two. The actor Alan mm-hmm. Richardson, and it was just like uh, you know he just wants to do book two. 
just he wants to do just the next book for the thing. So it's like no big mystery. It's like he just this was one of the books. He just wants to do the second book. So it's like no big mystery. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, uh, I'm very much, very much into it. Um, I liked it a lot. Um, any big negatives for you? Um, I do think uh, at least for like maybe one or two episodes, they kind of drag, and and they do like really telegraph uh one a twist with one of the characters mm. Mm. that come on you, you don't get this an actor that looks like this and not have him turn out to be a bad guy mm. Mm. that's a good point um yeah um i i you know i can't really think of any major negatives i love the lead performance i think especially and he's not mm -hmm. just one note he's not just like the ultra mm -hmm. badass guy just kind of comes in i mean there's some moments where he does have you know emotions and then you do see him and you do see kind of what he goes through and you do see flashbacks of his childhood and kind of what made him the person he is and what gives him kind of he's got a strict code you know he's got a kind of a you know a, a very strict kind of code of of what made him who he is and and very much helping the little guy very much um uh you know not you know not you know cowering to bullies you know standing up to bullies and fighting mm -hmm. get, uh, back against bullies you know that's very very important um and you mm -hmm. see that hey what's going on there love uh for tokyo how you doing man uh we just talking about reacher the uh series that is on amazon prime uh singing its praises right now um because if we don't i don't want that big motherfucker to come in my door um, <laughs> you know very much come walking in my hey, he'll come after you he'll come after you he, he, he i'm in japan i feel like i'm safe uh, no, he'll come to Japan. He'll just walk to Japan. He'll be the first person ever <laughs> in history to hitchhike to Japan. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I yeah liked it a lot. Uh, I thought I think it has a lot going for it. And to see like they're, they're going to do a new season um, and maybe a new location and new kind of kind of characters kind of going on. I'd love to see that. Um, yeah, um, for me, I give it a strong uh, tune in for me. What about you? Mm the same i this this show felt like a throwback to 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 network tv when it was at its finest mm. like uh, the early days of stuff like 24 early days of like uh breaking bad it felt like watching one of those shows mm. and i think you have an incredible lead performance by by alan richson a great supporting cast with a uh, uh, malcolm goodwin and willa fitzgerald uh, they they take what's uh, written for their characters and they run with it. And they are both they both have a lot of screen presence and great chemistry with Ritson. Mm -hmm. The mystery, I think, it is very fascinating. It is genuinely hard to figure out the why of it all. Mm, yeah. But when it's revealed, it's it, it's really cool. The violence in this it gets shocking at some point. There's a lot of removed appendages and shoved in places that they can't be. Mm, yeah yeah the chemistry Man, is... i'm shocked how yeah oh. i'm shocked how gory this show is you have great supporting character like uh harvey guyan from uh from what we do in the shadows is like the town's forensics guy and oh. he's always a he, and he's always a delight whenever he shows up mm. okay um yeah um the chemistry yeah, is amazing especially you know as it continues on and they're working together between all three of them between finley between uh Copeland, it's it's like the chemistry between all three of them is is really good um and really fun to watch um yeah yeah i yeah i i mean the action in the series is really good um yeah i would yeah i'm definitely interested to see a season two it's not gonna blow you away it's not a show that's like one of the i would say one of the best shows on tv you know what i mean or something like that but mm, it's just a solid I, I i wouldn't but it's really fucking solid it's very very solid and it's not that's not a slight on the show it's just that hey, it's 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 a good show that you could watch um, and, and check out uh, on Prime, and I think have a lot of fun with that you could just sit down and watch with watch with people, um, and yeah, um, yeah, maybe not watch it with your with your parents. I don't know, maybe too much because there's some sex scenes that kind of come up in it, but uh, <laughs> uh, 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 but uh, yeah, still uh, still a very good show. 